guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up. So, today's video is a bumper edition of what my plans are for May. And um, yeah, it's the first day of Me Made May today, if you're taking part. And I don't normally take part, I'll be honest, because these challenges, I always start off thinking, yeah, I'm going to take part in this this year. And then I just get sidetracked and busy with work and everything else. And just, it just falls by the wayside. So I don't know about you, but this year I have decided to try and take part because what I'm thinking is that I have made so many things, as many of you know, that follow my channel. And I'm thinking that there's a lot of things that do go unworn that are in my wardrobe and I'm sure if you are like me I reach for the same things over and over and obviously a lot what I want to wear depends on the weather and that kind of thing so I wanted to try and just experiment a little bit more with the me made clothes that I have in my wardrobe and I thought that would be quite fun to do in May. I'll start with what I'm wearing today which is is make that I haven't actually shown you yet and it's not even something I've sewn it's something I have knit but this is the Whitmore sweater by the lovely Amy Loudon who is Taylor S Studio. Is she Taylor S Studio? Yeah Taylor S Studio and it's a fabulous fabulous jumper so I knit this just before Christmas finished it at Christmas it's got this gorgeous yoke all the way around um and this yarn is the sublime cashmerino silk I believe and it's got these gorgeous sort of bell sleeves as well um and it hits me just on the waist and I'm wearing it with my just stand back a little bit I'm wearing it with my Empire Waist Trousers by Decades of Style. These are the black ones that I made a few years ago now, about four years ago. And um, yeah, I haven't been able to get in them, to be honest, for the last couple of years. But since I lost my weight, I can wear them again, which is fantastic. So that's today's outfit on the 1st of May. And yeah, I haven't actually filmed my April Makes vlog yet because some of my makes are in the wash. Looking back, I didn't even do an April plans vlog. However, I have made a few different things in April, but I'm gonna do a separate vlog on that to show you. So today, I it's Saturday, and I wanted to do some sewing this afternoon. However, I thought I would just go through what I want to make for May first before I start sewing things up. I don't know if you're a little bit wonky actually because I've just had to change my battery. So before we get started, I've got a couple of little goodies to show you because the lovely Judy who is running so and so came across yesterday evening and we went for a run last night in the rain because it just rained and rained and rained. And um, she went to a fabulous little shop called Socialising, which is based in the centre of York. And bless her, Cathy, who owns Socialising, had only just opened before the last lockdown. And so she's only just reopened. And Judy went during the week and she picked up a couple of little, little um, gifts for me, which was really cute. So I thought you'd like to see. So the first thing she brought for me was this cute little pen with a little sewing machine on there. That's really cute, isn't it? So uh, so that's gonna be really handy. And the other thing she show, she bought me is this, which looks like a ball of wool, but is actually a little tape measure. So that's really, really handy too. So thank you, Judy, if you're watching. They will definitely come in useful. Right, so plans for May. I didn't do a plans vlog last month because to be perfectly honest I didn't really have any plans for April and we had a lot on at home because we were having our patio redone which is almost finished now. The electrician's been in the last few days and put lights in and it looks amazing on a night so we just need the builders to come back next week to finish off and then it's done. Um, but yeah, April was taken up with demolishing the old patio and getting the new patio redone. So I didn't know what time I would have because obviously I'd got the builders here every day. I didn't really make any plans and I just wanted to sort of go with the flow and see what transpired over the course of April. So I did get a few bits made, which was great. But I've been thinking a little bit more now about May. We're coming into, hopefully, fingers crossed, the better weather. It's still very cold in the UK. We have had 
Fortunately, during April, while I was having the patio built, the weather was actually really good. It was very sunny, clear skies every day. And the mornings were very cold, the evenings were very cold, but during the day, it was quite pleasant. But then the last few days, as I knew it would, as soon as we got the patio done, the weather has turned, we're back to rain, cold, etc., and back to wearing jumpers. Looking at the weather forecast, there's no immediate change in that happening. I went to work this morning and it was two degrees on the 1st of May. And so I can see myself wearing jumpers for a little while longer yet, but I am thinking of summer days and balmy evenings sitting on my patio with a cocktail. Um, if that ever happens and I'm thinking about dresses because I love summer dresses it's my favorite thing to sew it's my favorite thing to wear and so yeah I have picked out a number of patterns and fabrics that I want to want to put together this month now there's a lot that I've chosen and I am not going to get everything made this month, but I guess I would rather have a lot to choose from so that I can go with what the mood takes me and be a bit more flexible dependent on the weather. So the first thing that I have chosen to make this month is the Tilly and the Buttons Seren Dress, which is this pattern here. Now this pattern envelope, as you can see, is totally dog-eared. And I will be honest, I've made this dress twice now I think and I really like it but I know that the two previous versions I've made are actually too big for me now so I have had to retrace the pattern it comes in two versions you've got one with a flounce and then one that has like a little tie at the waist with no flounce so dependent on the version that you're doing depends on the fabric choice so if you're going for the flounce you need something drapey so that the flounce doesn't sort of stick out and if you're going for the tie at the waist you can choose something with a little bit more structure such as a cotton or a cotton lawn so i'm going to do the flounce version which is the only version that i have made so far as i say i have retraced the pattern this week and the fabric that i've chosen to twirl this because i do want to make it out of some of my lady mcelroy fabrics is this lovely crepe that i got from walton's fabrics last year it's really lovely it's very inexpensive i've got loads of this i think i've got about five meters and i think this dress takes three meters i think it's not on the back of there but um yeah it takes about three meters three and a half meters mainly because of the skirt pieces they are really wide and um yeah i love this fabric it's beautiful and i think as a seren it will look really really nice now I do normally take better care of my patterns than this, but I have to say, when Tilly and the Buttons changed their pattern design and they went to this new design, their envelopes had absolutely no staying power whatsoever. And I think this was one of the first patterns that I bought in their new design. And literally, as soon as I opened it, the whole envelope fell apart. So consequently, it has got a little bit dog-eared. So it does need sticking back together. I do think they took on a lot of feedback from that at the time because I don't think I was alone in that happening and I think they their envelopes are sort of better do are a bit better quality now and stick together a bit better but um I do like this pattern I do like the seren dress so I'm looking forward to making that and I think that will be a lovely lovely summer dress the next pattern that I want to make is one of the remnants from the frugal fox challenge that happened back in march and obviously lo loads of us were looking at all the free dress patterns that were out there and this was one that took my eye at the time but i didn't make it for the challenge but i knew i wanted to make it for summer and it is the barden dress by peppermint magazine so it's basically a, a very straightforward dress with darts no sleeves and tears and it should be a fairly easy so i've got the pattern the pdf printed and all stuck together but i haven't actually traced out my size yet i don't i'm not sure what size i'm going to go for but i've been looking through my stash at fabrics that i want to make this dress out of because i think this is just such an easy summer dress to wear and to sew probably as well and um i've got this lovely lightweight cotton lawn that i bought from boys and it's got these sort of raised spots on it um this is fairly sheer and i am well aware that i am making a dress out of this i mean if i just open it up you can see 
how sheer that is but I am going to wear this with a slip. I'm not going to line it and I have got a nude slip that I can wear underneath it so hopefully it will be fine. But yeah I've got a fair bit of this and I think it would be nice to make a little top as well, a little summer top. So I just had this vision of a white barden dress which is probably not a great idea with a Weimaraner because he likes getting in the mud and white dresses and mud don't really go together do they? But I just think it'll be really lovely as a as a bard and dress in this fabric so I'm gonna have a go at that and yeah I think I mean this pattern these sort of tiered roughly gathered loose fit dresses are just everywhere at the minute aren't they and I think it takes let me just see how much it takes looking at the size chart there is a fair bit of ease in this. You're looking at round about four inches of ease round the bust. And yeah, there's 10 inches round the waist and another, blimey, 19 inches of ease around the hips. I think I will probably go with size C. The size is a sort of A right through to L. So it starts off at a bust of 31 up to a 53 inch bust, 24 waist, up to a four to six inch waist but again remember there is another nine inches of ease on that as well and then the hips are 34 up to 56 but the finished hip is 53 up to 77 so there's there's a lot of ease in this dress it's you know I think you can get away with it if you're outside that size range so I think I'm going to go with C size C which equates to 2.2 meters of fabric so yeah it doesn't actually use a lot of fabric and I've got five meters of this I think it was as I say this was again was very inexpensive from boys and I think it will look really nice I don't have a white dress and that's probably because they're not very practical either let's face it they look great in photographs don't they um but they aren't very practical especially if you you're a bit sloppy like I am with food and um drinks and things so but we'll see we'll see how we get on with that right moving on Till the Sun Goes Down, if you haven't heard of them, are a um, a company that sell vintage patterns and also vintage inspired fabrics as well. And their pattern range is called Now and Then Patterns and they have just released the Florin Wrap Dress and Skirt, which is this beauty here. And oh my word, I love this dress. It was released a few weeks ago and as soon as I saw it, I thought, I need that dress. It's just gorgeous and then I promptly forgot about it and then the lovely Shan who doesn't actually post on Instagram very often put up a post about a week ago and she put up a post about this dress um she bought this pattern and as soon as I saw it I thought oh I've forgotten about that pattern so I bought it and um yeah it's it's beautiful it's a wrap dress that obviously the wrap is at the back and it's got these gorgeous pockets with a um i don't know what kind of fastening actually so you have different options with this pattern you've got obviously a dress with sleeves a dress without sleeves and then the skirt and it's a full a-line silhouette fitted bodice and it finishes with belt ties that are secured at the front so you've got bracelet length sleeve option short sleeve and sleeveless three neck shape options a square a square shape square shape with a v-notch and a scoop shape as well so and then you've got the option of front patch pockets which is just amazing so there's loads of loads of options with this dress fabric choices it says medium weight woven fabrics suitable such as cotton linen visco chambray polyester mix needle cord and most crepes not suitable for knits now it does take a fair bit of fabric that's the only thing um you're looking at dependent obviously if you're just making the skirt well even the skirt actually you're looking at four yards it says um but for the dress i'm going to go for the yellow one in the middle the sleeveless one and that version it says takes about five yards so it's it's hefty in fabric usage but i've got some lovely fabric so i've got this cotton lawn which I bought from a seller on eBay. And I think they used to be Indian Royal Treasure, but they're not known as that anymore now. I think they're called Ink Me, which is a bit unusual, but they have 
loads of different amazing prints they're based in india and you can have the prints printed on different bases so i went for the cotton cambric which is a bit it's in between a cotton voile and a cotton lawn so it's not as it's not as lightweight as a cotton voile but it's not as heavy as a cotton lawn even though cotton lawn's not heavy it is a bit thicker than this white one um but this is it here and i love this it's just a beautiful beautiful design gorgeous florals i love my florals and i love big florals because i just think they're really statement um and yeah it's it's beautiful so i bought five meters of this so there's going to be plenty to do this dress and i just think it's going to look amazing so i'm hoping to um definitely get that one done for the summer hopefully i'll get it done this month but we'll see we'll see how it goes i may even do I may even do a sew along for it but we'll see we'll see how it goes so that's the florin wrap by now and then patterns so next up while we're still on with dresses is the jessica dress by mimi g patterns which is this one here now this I will link to it down below when i got this it was free because she did it on a sort of you know this dress is free if you get it between these dates so i picked this up when it was actually free but i think i think there's a um a charge for it now but essentially it's a gathered waist dress full button front with princess seamed bodice and then you've got these huge pockets on the front and they really are huge because i've made this dress before and it's fabulous i really like this dress so it's it's gorgeous so i have got two fabrics that i want to make this dress out of because as i say i've made it out of the brush strokes cotton lawn by lady mcelroy i'll put a picture of it here and i, I really really like that dress i wear it a lot in summer and so i've got these fabrics that are embroidered cottons which i just think will look great in that style so the first one is this one which i got from lamazzi and i don't know if they've still got this but it's a gorgeous sort of mid blue cotton lawn with really lovely embroidery on i think that will look fabulous in the jessica so that's the first fabric that i've chosen the second one is another embroidered cotton which is this one by lucky fashions in dewsbury so this is the lovely manji i'm not sure if she's still got it but it's a beautiful embroidered cotton as you can see and then it's got like a it's got a sort of border edge to it a cut out border at the bottom hopefully i don't know if you can see that very well let me just stand up there we go that's probably better so you can see there how the um the cut out works just at the edge now it runs parallel to the cross grain does the design so you, you know you would need to cut the pieces out because i'm thinking that i would want this cut out bit to be sort of at the bottom of where the hem is because it's got like a nice little scalloped edge there as well hopefully you can see that and i think that would look really nice as the hem so i have got three meters of this i don't know if manjit still has this but I will link to her down below, below so you can go and, and ask her. She does send mail order, but she's based in Dewsbury and she's just a lovely, lovely lady. Really lovely. And I've had some amazing fabrics from her. So I want to get this sewn up. I bought this last year and it was always with the intention of making either this dress, the Jessica, or the Sienna dress by Sew Over It, which is very similar to this. I think the only difference is it doesn't have the huge pockets and the Sienna dress has shirring on the back so it's probably easier to fit but this fits me fine so i'm just going to make that up in that one so next up i have just bought another tilly and the buttons pattern and it was one that actually i was never going to buy and then i've slowly slowly come round to it which is just like me all over but it is the indigo which is this pattern i'm sure all of you have heard of this pattern because it has been really popular but i want to make the tunic version so this one here with the exposed frills and i just think wearing that with sort of fitted not cycling shorts but you know 
you know the leggings that finish just below your knee um i think one of those would look really nice with it so i have got this lovely viscose that i bought from fabrics galore i think they still have this so if they do i will link it down below but it's leopard print and i really like this some leopard prints i'm not enamored with at all because i think I don't know I think I, I do like a leopard print but it has to be the right leopard print I think some have a tendency to look really I don't know just not very nice but I like this one I think this one is really lovely so um yeah this is a viscose and I think as the indigo tunic I think that will look really really cool and with just with a pair of little black below the knee cropped leggings I think will look great and just be nice and easy to wear um especially on sort of cooler days but you just still want to feel a little bit i don't know you know you don't you want to wear something that's not tight and fitted because it's just a bit more breezy and i just think that will look really nice so that's that one keeping alongside the indigo theme and the reason why i never went for the indigo before was because i've got this pattern mccall's m7969 which again has been really popular and i've made two of these previously and i want to make another one because it has just amazing sleeves it's just a lovely pattern but what i want to do with it with it this time is i actually want to create a ruffle now i know that these other versions have a ruffle on but the ruffle on these makes the dress really long and the ruffle is quite narrow what i want to do is keep the dress to sort of just a uh, just knee length or maybe just below the knee but make a deep ruffle so I'm probably going to cut the skirt well I'll trace the skirt but I will cut it off and then put a, a deeper ruffle in so it's in tears that's the plan anyway we'll see how that goes and the fabric that I've chosen for this is a Lady McElroy fabric that I've had in my stash ages and I'm sorry it's a bit creased I've just pulled it out of my stash and it was a bit screwed up don't tell um, this one here I think it's the hydrangea print um, I don't know the actual name of it but as I say it's very very soft it's gorgeous so I think that will be lovely as the M7969 um, with a bit of a ruffle on I'm hoping I've got enough I'm not sure how much of this I've got actually uh, I think I have I think I've got about two and a half meters probably just under under three just under, between two and a half and three meters so hopefully i've got enough we'll see how we get on with that the final dress that i want to make is the ravello dress by sew over it so this was in their summer dreaming capsule collection that i think they released was it last year or the year before um this is it here i have made this before and it's a wrap bodice with little cuffs on the sleeves and then it's quite a straight skirt it's not fitted as such but it does skim your figure and then it's got like a curved wrap around the front skirt part now this uses acres of bias binding honestly absolute acres so i when i made this before i used pre-purchased bias binding i don't think i would make my own to match because you'd just be there forever but the only thing I didn't like about the version that I made before was how the cuffs are attached to the main bodice because you end up where you have to just tack in various areas to keep it attached and I didn't like that. So I am going to do it slightly differently when I make the dress this time. But the fabric that I have chosen again is... I believe... that I think this is a Lady McElroy fabric. I'm sure it is. But it's gorgeous it's beautiful i think it's the is it the oriental koi yes because it has fish on it there are fish on it there there's a, an upside down fish there you go look so this is the oriental koi and i just think this is going to suit that that pattern totally it's really beautiful it's on a black base viscose very lightweight very drapey and stunning stunning fabric this i've got four meters of this and you do need a good four meters of fabric for that dress especially if you're going to make that particular version which is the the long length version it does come in a shorter length as well and you can also make it just as a top but i want to make the full length version of this dress again because i just really like the silhouette so i think this is probably going to be my first make this month um i 
am considering the bard undress first but the weather's not great at the minute and i usually when i've made something i want to wear it straight away and i don't think especially in this next week or two i'm going to get the opportunity to wear the bard and dress because i just don't think it's going to be warm enough so the ravello i will wear so i think i'm going to start with this i think this is going to be my first one okay so i've got another six fabrics to show you that i am considering making a few extra bits and pieces with now the first three are all linens and i have bought three plain linens the first one just being a white one again i'm sorry these are really creased but they've just been washed and they've not been pressed yet but this is beautiful white linen again i bought these from a seller on ebay um i took a bit of a chance on it because linen at the minute is really expensive you know most linens that i've looked at are sort of between I don't know 13 and 20 pounds a meter and the linen that i bought for my my burnside bibs that i made in april i bought mine the maker linen and it's beautiful it's a lovely color and that's why i chose it because i wanted that color um, but it was like 28 pounds a meter it's, it's just so expensive and this was 11 pound 48 a meter and honestly it is just as good it is just as nice a linen so i've got two meters of white i bought two meters of black and then i also got this beautiful aubergine color it's coming up a bit more sort of crimson on screen but it is more of an aubergine color if I sort of stand back a little bit like that, that's more of a true colour. So I've got two metres of each of these. Now, the plan with the white one is I want to make a shirt. And I am considering the Olya shirt by Paper Theory. I'll put a picture of it here because I don't actually have that pattern yet. I really like this shirt. The only thing that I would prefer is to have a covered button placket. And I do have shirt patterns that I've made before that have a covered button placket so i'm just wondering if i could possibly hack that pattern to put a covered placket on um but i love the design of this shirt i like the the design lines on it i don't think i would put the front pockets in um i think i would leave the pockets off but i just want a plain white linen shirt because i don't own one and i think it's such a versatile piece for summer you know to wear with smart trousers or you can just wear it with jeans wear it over a little cami so that's the plan with the white linen the black and the aubergine linens i want to make staying with paper theory i want to make the paper theory zadie zadie jumpsuit but cut off into shorts to make it a play suit so I've got two meters of each of these and I'm hoping there's enough. Um, if there isn't, I will just get another meter because as I say, it was 11 pounds a meter, which for linen I think is really good. And this is really, really soft, it's lovely. When it first came, it was quite stiff. And I think this is the thing with linen. It, it does tend to be quite stiff and you can get linen in different weights. I know Susie from Thread, Thread Quarters has just posted today that she's got a new, um, a new range of Irish linens on her website that are different weights and all different colours. So some will be suitable for tops, some more suitable for bottoms. Um, I don't know what weights these are, but I did do some research about how to soften linen because, as I say, it tends to come quite stiff. And I think it's always difficult when you want to make a shirt out of linen or a top, trying to find a linen that's the right weight to be able to do that. So it's not too stiff, if that makes sense. But... I did some reading about how to soften linen and I used half a cup of bicarbonate of soap soda in the washing machine just with my washing powder no fabric softener just put it through a 60 degree wash and let it lie and dry outside and this is really soft now this is beautiful it's going to be lovely for um for a shirt so i'm really really looking forward to making that but i've got to buy that pattern first so um hopefully that will get done at some point as well and then finally i've just got three jerseys to show you so i have the audrey top by sew over it and i've had this a while and i've not made it yet and i really want to make it so i have stash dived for this because I've not made it before, so I don't want to use a really, you know, a really precious fabric as such. But I've got some lovely navy and I think it's off-white jersey in my stash. I'm not 
sure if this is just a cotton jersey no it's a bit thicker than a cotton jersey so i'm not sure if it's like a lightweight ponty but it's very beautiful lovely navy and um off-white breton stripe it's going to be perfect isn't it so this is going to be an audrey i can see this with white shorts all i will say about white shorts is watch out for my april makes vlog then you'll see what i mean or white trousers white jeans i think it's just such a classic look isn't it so looking forward to having a go at that and last month in my makes for february no my my march in my march makes vlog i showed a breton dress that i made i can't remember which pattern it was it was a mccall's pattern and it was one that I got free with one of the sewing magazines so it's just it literally is just a very easy fitting jersey dress that you can put together in an hour honestly it's very very quick and it had like a um a boat neck so i want to make another one of those and i have this gorgeous jersey which i think i got this from sew me sunshine beautiful cotton jersey with the rainbow stripe so i want to have a go at making another one of those in that because i think that will be really lovely just to wear with little sneakers for summer and then finally shiona from sewisfaction posted a video a few days ago i'm not sure whether it was on instagram or whether it was actually on her channel but it was a i think it was was it the I'm not sure if it was the Agnes that she'd extended into a tee or whether it was another t-shirt pattern that she had but it was really lovely and she'd made it out of the art gallery jersey and I've been coveting this jersey for a long time now ever since I saw the lovely Eileen who um, I know she watches my channel so hi Eileen and she made the was it the Mayfair dress by Nina Lee. I will put a picture of it here. I think it was the Mayfair. I'm thinking Mayfair and I don't think it is. I can't remember the name. I'll put a picture of it here but she made it out of this jersey and I remember seeing her in it when we were at one of Shan's retreats and then I saw Shiona make a t-shirt dress out of the same fabric a few days ago. It does come in a couple of different colourways and I just thought you know enough's enough. I've been after this fabric for about two years now. I'm going to buy it. So I have bought it and it's this one. This lovely cotton jersey by Art Gallery. It's very, very soft. But I would say it is fairly lightweight. Um, it's definitely not as thick a cotton jersey as this one. So I'm a little bit worried. But I think the print will hide a lot of sins, should we say. So I'm going to make another one of those long t-shirt dresses out of this as well. Because I think for summer it's just a fabulous choice, isn't it? But they have this in a different colourway as well. I think it's more like a orangey yellow and purple, which I really like that one as well. This is incredibly bright. This sort of orange on here, coral colour, is like neon. It's really bright, but it's so pretty. I really like it. So I've got a couple of metres of that as well, and that's going to be a t-shirt dress as well. So yeah, after all that, I need a drink. Right, so I better get cracking because there's lots to get through. It's the 1st of May, 31 days in May. There's a lot of a lot of choices here, aren't there? So I think, yeah, I think I'm going to start with the Ravello because I love that. I really want to, I really want, I just really want that dress. I want to wear that dress. I can see it finished already and I want to, I want to get it made. So I'm going to start with that and we'll just see how we get on. I don't for any any second think that I'm going to get through all this in May but I've got lots of options and that's what I wanted. I didn't want to be sort of sat thinking oh what shall I make, what shall I make next. I wanted to have the options and then you know I've got a plan and I can just slowly work my way through depending on what, what the weather's going to do etc and what um, events we maybe have in May. Here in the UK, we are supposed to be opening up a little bit more later on in May. I can't remember the exact date. The 17th is in my head, but I don't know if that's correct. And it just means that we'll be able to meet up with more people and do a little bit more. And hopefully the weather will improve so we can start, you know, having barbecues and drinks on the patio. That would be so nice. It would be so nice. So I hope you've enjoyed having a look at my plans anyway. Let me know what your plans are for May down below in the comments and let me know what you think of my choices and the fabric picks that I've chosen as well. I'm really keen to hear your thoughts. 
So have a great week and I'll be back with you really soon. Take care, bye.